welcome to the channel another day another react tool and the reason why i am focusing so much on these react tools is that this is probably one of the best or maybe only way to provide more and more context about your own data to all of these llms because these llms don't know about your data and the best way we could find out in order to provide massive amount of relevant data to the llm is through react and that is why we have been covering these react tools almost on a daily basis in this video i am going to discuss this react tool which is erag this comes with lexical semantic text and knowledge graph searches as well as conversation context in the context of rag when we say lexical semantic text and knowledge graph this means different type of searches or analysis that can be performed to generate relevant answers for example when we say lexical search this type of search focuses on literal meaning of words and phrases using techniques such as string matching tokenization part of speech tagging named entity recognition when we say semantic search this type of search goes beyond the literal meaning of words and phrases focusing on the contextual meaning and relationship between entities using techniques such as entity disambiguation relationship extraction concept ma mapping ontology based search and few others when we say text search this search involves searching for relevant text passages or documents that contain the answer such as keyword extraction text ranking and passage retrieval when we say knowledge graph search what it means is that this search uses a graph based representation of knowledge to retrieve answers leveraging relationships between entities concepts and facts using techniques such as graph traversal node ranking and subgraph matching and the whole conversation context refers to the ability of the react tool to consider the context of conversation or dialogue when generating answers which takes into account things like previous questions and answers user preferences contextual information and by incorporating all of these types of searches and contextual information this erag tool tries to make it comprehensive coverage of your own data and in this video we are going to install this erag locally and then we will see how it plays around before i show you the installation let me give a huge shout out to mast compute who are sponsoring the vm and gpu for this video if you are looking to rent a gpu on affordable prices i will drop the link to their website and i will also give you a coupon code of 50 percent discount on a range of gpus also i will be using olama as a local model to be used with this rag e-rag and if you don't know what Olama is, how to install it, please search my channel. I have covered it in great detail. I already have it installed. So let me take you to my local terminal where I'm running Ubuntu 22.04. And I have this one GPU card of 48 GP VRAM. Let me clear the screen. And I already have Olama installed. I don't have any model at the moment. So I'm just going to do Olama pull. And I maybe I'll just go with Mistral in this one. Let's wait for it to pull the Mistral. It is going to pull all the layers and then it is going to do the checksum. It's not that big. Okay, so while that happens, uh, let's also create a Conda environment, which I will use to keep everything nice, simple and separate. And you can either go with 3.10 or 3.11. The repo uses 3.11, but I see that some of the packages are not compatible. so. I'm going to first try it out with Python 3.10 and I will also drop the link to its website in video description. Okay, so our model is downloaded and checksum is done and there we have our Mistral model. Let me clear the screen and now let me paste here to create the Conda environment and then we will step into it. Let's wait for it to finish and that is done. Let's git clone the repo of erag and as I said, I'm going to also put the link to it in video's description and that is done and we have also stepped into it let me create uh, and install all the requirements in this repo and this is going to take a bit of a time so let's wait for it to finish so when that happens that it uh, complains about this fits thing you can simply install it by pip 
so i have just done the pip install fits and it is installing it you can ignore this so this is a command which i have used which actually disappeared very very quickly this is a command pip install fits okay so all the prerequisites are done let me clear the screen and now let's download um, the small model through spacey which is used for natural language processing let's wait for it to okay so it says it's not there so we first need to install spacey here okay so let me install it and this is a problem with these packages that when they install the requirement they should have done the spacey too anyway so let's install it with pip and that is getting installed let's wait for it to finish and we will clear the screen let me clear the screen now and now also install the nltk pip to install nltk for the natural language toolkit okay that thankfully is already there so let me download that uh, punct with the nltk let's wait for it that is done and by the way this punct is a tokenizer which we are downloading with nltk which is natural language toolkit so we have downloaded our model for the natural language with spacey and our tokenizer with nltk okay so that is all done let me clear the screen so this is the whole installation now we will be using it with olama you can also use it with grok but then you wouldn't need to create a dot env file and put your grog api key there but i'm just going to see if it works only with olama and i'm going to start this main dot by here and once you run it it is going to download few of the models let's wait for it to start and there you go so we have this very retro looking uh, interface so let me make it a bit bigger can you see it i think a bit patchy i'm sorry i don't know if it can be improved but it's fine that is fine so the good thing is that um olama is already selected let me try to make it a bit uh, bigger on my screen okay this looks much better now you can see that as soon as we launched it it has automatically selected olama I'm just going to use Olama. You can use Llama.cpp if it is running locally, or you can use a Grok. But you would need to create a .env file with your API key for Grok. That is free with some throttling. So, but I am I have selected Olama, and then you remember that we installed Mistral model, so that is already selected. And then, in order to do the embedding of any of your document, you can upload it in uh, docx format, JSON, PDF, text, and you can even go with some of the structured JSON data. It could be CSV or some uh, Excel sheet. So embedding means that it is going to take your raw text and convert it into numerical representation or vector or embedding. So let me click on here on upload text and then I'll just go up here. It's a very retro looking stuff. So interesting, I think. Uh, I'm just trying to search my file here so I'm just going to see my files okay you see I as soon as I selected it a uh, folder it has said text file content processed and appended to do db.txt with table of content in db underscore content.txt so it already did that now you can execute embeddings for uploaded documents so as soon as I click here it says that it has successfully submitted this is computed and saved to ereg output db embedding dot pt so let's go to that db embedding folder so in this one we have saved it as a created ereg this is the output and there you go so this is a db content which it was talking about when we opened it so if i just double click so this is our file because there was nothing in it so it hasn't really done much there and then if i show you this i'm not sure if i could be able to open it it is in the pytorch format but maybe i'll just say open with the replication i don't think so it is going to open it but anyway i nonetheless i opened it in my text editor so you, these are all the embeddings mumbo jumbo which has converted that document into numerical representation and you see all sort of characters are there okay so i'm just going to press cancel here 
and then there are some db.txt file which you can open and see this is my actual data which it has converted and then what sort of api key and all that stuff it used also let's open this config.json and this is our config where it is telling us what exactly it did in different sort of way so what you can do with it you can simply play around with this tool and then create the embedding create the chunking and then you can try out with different things one of the use cases there are two use cases which i can think of from uh, top of my head first you can use it in your rack pipeline and then you can use it with chunking so now for example you have your lot of files of data and you're not sure about what would be the ideal chunk size so if you click on the settings tab and you go to the settings here you can do a lot of things for example um, you can manage your chunking size and overlap for document processing you can do embedding model selection and batch size and plus you can set up some knowledge graph parameters like similarity threshold and minimum entity occurrence you can go with model search method weights react system parameters like context size update threshold and and this is more relevant to your react pipeline if you are deep into it so that is what setting is and if there is a llama.cpp local server you can specify it here so if i go to main here you can even so we just saw how to create embeddings and we saw them you can even go with the knowledge graph and i already explained at the start of the video what knowledge graph is so you see it has created a knowledge graph in json format and it has saved it here so if i click ok and then go again here you see that now we have this knowledge graph so if i try to open it in a um, maybe i'll just open it in firefox so this is our knowledge graph where it has specified the nodes here as you can see then what is the node type and then a lot of data about nodes their relationship and all that stuff so this is how you can create a knowledge graph too plus you can um, create knowledge graph from raw data which you provided earlier instead of embeddings and then you can even do the web rag and you can start a conversation with your rag system so and then it has started you can go to the console back so for example if i go to the console here you see you can uh, start talking with it so you can say um what or maybe just say hello because i haven't given it any legit data so okay now this error means that because i haven't set up my browser DuckDuckGo, that is why it is giving me otherwise if you set up your browser it is even going to do your browser search for you okay so i'm just going to keep it here i'm not going to cancel it otherwise it is going to break it and then you can even uh, create a null create some queue these are all the parameters for your ragging i'm not going to go into that detail and then there are a few things which are still under development here so all in all seems very interesting tool where you can um, in my opinion this will be very useful if you want to test out various rack parameters before you put them in the production or make them part of your rack pipeline so good stuff interface could be improved installation could be improved and i think some of the documentation could be improved but other than that very good step and good to see people creating this free open source tools around ragging let me know what do you think if you're using anything similar please share your uh, experience in the comments if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching